6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, we have Stacia Salvatore Roy. Ms. Salvatore Roy, you are up. We can come back to her. Okay. Uh, next is uh, Catherine Glowatsky. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, uh, so I'm here uh, on behalf of uh, Valley Solar LLC in East Hampton. Uh, my name is Kate Glowatsky. Uh, I'm the permit administrator over there. Um, Can we see you when you're talking? Oh, uh, yes. Hold on. Let me just Thank you. get the video. Oops, sorry about that. There we Thank go. Thank you. Hello. Um, so I'm here on uh, behalf of Valley Solar to submit um, a site plan review application for a ground mounted solar system at 425 River, uh, River Drive. Um, I, small scale ground mount. Yes, correct. Uh, I emailed uh, Bill all of the plans, some 80 odd page document uh, PDF. Um, I also had uh, three copies dropped off to the planning board office, a hard copy for you guys, a hard copy for the building department and a hard copy for the fire department. Um, I do have a fourth copy for the town clerk um, that I will submit once I know what the filing fee is uh, to go with that. So let's see with the review lead time that we have to give that we can't, I think we have to take it up at our first April meeting. Okay. Is that the old Tudor house? Yes. Well, it's funny how you remember addresses from your childhood. <laughs> Yeah, um, they're putting up a ground mount. I think he just built a whole brand new house over there. Um, so been a whole process getting that set up. Um, and when is the first meeting in April? Uh, calendars. April 4th. April 4th. Okay. Um, and will we receive like a like an email invitation to that or does it just go on the agenda and we just, just show up to that meeting it will go on the agenda you just show up okay um so this will be for the administrative review on april 4th okay okay um and when uh when do i need to submit the uh fee for that slash when do we know when the fee for that is going to be determined is that at the administrative review? No, let me, I'm working on looking at it right now. I just want to get the uh, small scale. I don't think there is an administrative a, review. I don't think there is a fee for that one. For I, the just, I, I don't think there is a fee for it okay. because there's no legal advertising and there's no uh, notice of a butters. Oh, okay, great. So it's just oh. a matter of getting the information in with, uh, yeah, there's, there's no special, there's no, there's no special permit required or just, just administrative review for that. Okay. Um, and should I hold off? I'm, I'm guessing I should hold off until after that meeting to get all the building permit materials together to submit on that. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can't really apply until we get a, the administrative review. Because okay. one, one of the re, part of the review is to go to the fire department and the building inspector and the police and they get to comment on it. And um, once you get that, then you could go on the file through to the appropriate uh, building 
I'm not sure if you need another fire department formal review of the building inspector will advise you on that. Yeah, I know the NFPA one, the 2021 regulations just came through with all new setbacks and stuff. Oh, they so. got, they, they, the, the whole building, the, the building code train changes drastically. Um, yeah, on a lot of uh, things within the latest edition. You know, it's it's never boring. Um, <laughs> not, <laughs> always not something. In state, not in the state of Massachusetts. No. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Uh, so that's on the schedule for the review. Uh, is there any other action I need to take uh, on that? No. Um, just get that. What did you say? The uh, first meeting in April, Bill, for that? Uh, April 4th. Okay. You have an electronic copy of the stuff, Bill? Uh, I did get an electronic copy and I sent it around to everyone. Okay, all right. Okay, I just haven't seen it yet. That's fine. I'll, I'll take a look. Okay. Okay, yeah, just uh, show up at the hearing. We'll give you a copy of the agenda. And okay. they'll give you the Zoom, Zoom, Zoom connection and you can explain at that time. So oh. there is a potential catch here. So look for the the authorization for Zoom meetings expires March 30th. Oh. 31st, I guess. Yeah. Um, there is, it is said to be extended, but um, we haven't seen it an extension yet. Last time it went really down to like the last minute. Yeah. Um, so it may end up being an in-person meeting. Okay at a place to be determined, uh, yeah, right. but it'll be in the agenda. Yeah. Okay, all right, uh, I'll keep an eye out for that. Um, it'll be in the agenda. Um, yes. Great, um, and uh, after the administrator review about how long uh, does it take for a decision to that for that to be made? I just wanna keep the client. As long as, long as you have everything in order, you'll get a decision, most likely get a decision that night. Okay. And you could go to the building inspector the next day and file your stuff. All right, amazing. Um, great, thank you guys so much. Okay. All right, have a nice night. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll loop back to uh, Stacia Salvatore Roy. Did you have a question for the planning board or are you here for a public hearing? You're on mute. there you lost a picture miss salvatore roy and you're still on mute we'll give you a second there we go that one, you're still muted So on uh, my screen, uh, the mute button is in the lower left-hand corner. It's a microphone with a line across it. And you click on that and you're unmuted. You're still muted. Yep. So, uh, maybe I can streamline this a little bit. If you are here for the public hearing that is scheduled for 645. No, you have some questions. Okay. okay. In, in your in your screen, if you move your mouse to the upper right corner of your picture, do you see a button that says mute? No. On the lower left corner of your screen, do you see a microphone? She's actually here for a sign on Russell Street. Oh, she is. Okay. Okay. 
<clears throat> no, that's the one that they need to uh, move back. It was the used to be had a uh, hasty fence. What? It used to be hasty fence, and uh, Mass DOT is making them move the sign. I sent you Bill, I think, last week, part of what Mass DOT gave them. And you want to move your. Well, well, we'll do this, but we'll we'll do this by an, an animation. We'll ask you the question. You nod your head yes or no. Okay. <laughs> you want to move? You want to keep the sign the same size? You just want to move it back. You want to move it back? I'm going to ask. I'm going to throw numbers. You nod your head. Five feet. More than five feet. Ten feet. Ten. You want to move it back ten feet? Exactly 10 feet more, we we'll give it within a few inches. Same sign, moving back 10 feet. Non illuminated, except an external illumination, if any. Yes. Do you need really any approval from us then, Tom? If it's the same. What it is is that they uh, were told by Mass DOT where to put it, remember, like uh, for the palm reader, which we came in. Yeah. So it's the same kind of scenario. Only thing is, though, is the sign that they have now, they're just going to need to come for a sign cover out change because we didn't get a new sign permit for that particular new business. Um, but we just want to make sure that they're in the right, you know, where where you guys would also, you know, want it to, that they're set back enough. I don't I, recall seeing anything come in on this. I that's like, I think it was Thursday. So it'd be for an email from you. Yes, an email from me that shows the location that Mass DOT gave them. And so did your husband send a Email to Bill with the sign, the picture of the sign. I don't see anything from you on Thursday. It's either Thursday or Friday. Yes, she's saying Friday that they sent. Yeah, I had told them it was just a formality. I didn't think there'd be a problem, but I figured to I'd just run it by you. I mean, I want to guess that if you're moving the sign back 10 feet, same sign, same kind of illumination external as today. And if it if the building inspector is good with it, then a planning board, I doubt we have an issue with it. I don't even think you need our approval. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna kind of be just almost about I believe as the uh, palm reader. By the looks of it. Okay. I mean, does anybody disagree with what I'm saying? No. no. I mean, it's a go. Yeah. Okay. If the building inspector is good, the planning board is good because there's really no change except for location. Okay. Well, so, thanks. So, um, you just have to, I told your husband just to apply for the permit just for the uh, new sign change on that. The face of it, and that's it. Okay. What's the address? For, what's the address for this? Oh, uh, two two fifty seven. Is it no? No, no. Two forty seven. It's two forty two. two well, you got to think two four forty three. Two forty three. We're close. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we can do mine after all. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Denise Barstow Mans. Hi. Hello. I'm here navigating the ever changing entertainment license. Um, so, Barstow's Dairy Store and Bakery has applied or we went to renew our entertainment license, but we were told we needed to reapply. Um, so that is what I'm doing. Yeah, the 
We're working on a zone or possibly zone or entertainment bylaw to address some of the issues that have arisen um, on this. It'll probably be on a town meeting warrant for the annual town meeting. In the meantime, I don't think we want to hold you up. When does your license expire? Or does it, is it due? It needs, to, my understanding of that at the beginning of each year needs to be, I need to pay a hundred dollars to get the entertainment license for that year. Okay. Are there going to be any, uh, you sent a copy of the license application, but are there going to be any physical changes to the location or to the scheduling? No. About, about how many venues do you do a year, roughly? A um, week, couple of months? Yeah, probably like 10-ish. Okay. We'll have like live acoustic music or a speaker to come and talk about the history of agriculture. Yeah, oh, the, uh, as far as the venues go, even the, the venue that we're getting, that we're proposing, or the entertainment bylaw we're proposing, um, any educational stuff to do with a farm, like if you bring somebody in for a, a farm tour, for, oh, educate them about farm stuff, in, in a nutshell, wouldn't be, would be exempt any kind of educational stuff like that. We're really going after the live entertainment and the food trucks that would be coming in. What if and, there's a microphone at the event? Pardon? I thought that if it was if it was educational and there was like a podium, that's oh. okay. A, 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 a what? A podium, like a microphone. A yeah, if, you have, if you have a speaker, that's fine. It, yeah, it's yeah. The, Just music. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the entertainment, it's truly the entertainment and the food trucks and the beverage trucks that we're trying to address. Not so much somebody coming in and trying to, if you're, you're doing, you do some of both, okay? And that's fine. For what you do, what you're doing from what, I mean, I only live a few miles away from you, so I see it fairly often when you do something, anything that you are doing, you would be, certainly able to continue to do it wouldn't have it would virtually have no effect on you okay um once the bylaw is in and passed would probably uh won't be until well after the annual town meeting in may and stuff like that but just to put you at ease it's not going to put any undue hardship on you and it won't prevent you from doing anything that you're doing today because you're you're how do you call it you're a low-key operation compared to some other stuffs Okay, so we're not we're not trying to. First of all, we want to promote the farm use and what you people are doing, and we want to keep you in business because we want to keep the open space. So we're not trying to penalize you in any way, shape, or form. We're just trying to get some. There have been some issues uh, in a nutshell with some events, not necessarily in Hadley, but out of state, where well, food trucks have exploded and people have been killed. And because they never went to the fire department or the fire chief to get the proper permits and their stuff that they were doing was ill, was not in accordance with NFPA. So those are the things we're trying to keep and get a handle on, okay? Just so you'll know that this is not just, we're trying to control certain things. There is good reason what we're trying to do this. Um, one of the issues, I think one of the things was in Philadelphia, um, but there have been several types of these explosions in the United States. Some people have been killed and some others have been truly very injured. So we don't want that to happen. Okay. No, and and we have never had a food truck. Um, we're just yeah, looking for live music. Yeah, sometimes. you put your own on-site your own on-site kitchen. So you're 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 in a different category, um, like a few of the other ones that are. Similar, you, you cooks, um, what you call it, North Hadley Sugar Shack. You all have your own on-site kitchen, and you do your own. Yeah, you know, you're you 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 fall under a different set of the building code. You've been compliance in day one, so um, I'd make a recommendation that we simply let Barstow Farm continue on doing what they're doing. I'll make a motion to that effect. A second. Any any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?
Motion carries. We'll get a letter out to the uh, uh, what you call it? licensing department tomorrow by tomorrow, and then you can get you your permit or your license or whatever it's called. Okay. Thank you for your time and for the clarification. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Oh, what's, oh, what's the? Oh, you know, I got the address to mine. We got the permit. Yeah. Next um, up, Mr. Dwyer. Yeah. Next up, I was uh, next one in was Samantha. I'm not sure if that's for. A question for the planning board or for the upcoming public hearing or for something else. Samantha. Just here for Peter. For Peter. Okay. Uh, uh, Peter and Alan uh, are here for um, the discussion of Colony Drive. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, M. Ike is here for the special permit. Right. For the home occupation. Right. Okay. Um, since I think the M, the home occupation might be the shorter one of the two, we'll go for that one first. And I'll read the note as it appeared in the Gazette. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, February 21, 23, beginning at 6.45 p.m., Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Emily Ike for a special permit to conduct a home occupation at 5 Loriana Lane. Said home occupation is a private therapy practice. Plans are available by emailing planning at Halley MA or visit town clerk's office during normal business hours. Published twice in the Gazette, James, uh, twice in the Gazette, January 23 and 30. And with that, Ms. Ike. You can, you're up, you can explain what you want to do. Great. Um, so I am looking to start a private practice. I'm a pelvic floor therapist. It would be out of one room in my home. Um, we have plenty of parking and had sent over the parking plan done by um, Randy Eisner. Um, and I also emailed over a photo today of the six by 12 inch sign that I put up to designate parking in our driveway. Okay. Are you on sewer or septic? Uh, I'm on sewer. You're on, oh, you are. Lorianne is on sewer. Okay. Yep. What's the address again? Lorianne, what, what number? Five. 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 The only I got a couple of phone calls and they simply asked they were the, the I guess they were we call them a butters and they had some questions about parking and the only concern anybody raised was parking on the street and yes. I said parking on the street is not permitted and he says what happens I says the parking on the street must be 100% contained on the individual's property if they park on the street I'm not going to say it's never going to happen but if it happens on any kind of a continuous basis, you call the building inspector zoning enforcement officer and they can actually lose their license to operate of the special permit. He can address that. And I says, and they says, really? I says, yes. So I said, well, if it's, if it's, I said, the idea of a home occupation is to be virtually invisible except for the occasional cars they're going to see. And they says, oh, other than the, the parking on the street, that was the only concern I had when I told them about the conditions, they were good. Nobody else had a concern. Great, glad to hear that. So. Is there any license required uh, that we know of, Jim? Uh, are you a recognized therapist and do you have a license and does it have to be displayed? And does the Board of Health have to be involved? Um, I do have a license. It is displayed in my treatment room. Um, Board of Health does not need to be involved. I have proper insurance and all of that. So should be good to go. Okay. What about handicap accessibility? Um, so at this time, my space is not handicap accessible, um, but the plans in the future are to move it downstairs in the next, you know, five years. Mr. 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 Tom, does, does she need to be handicap accessible? Yes, the um, public is welcome. So the, you know, if somebody was to bring up the issue, 
Um, or if she did substantial work, it would trigger it, you know, at that time. Okay. Um, I can also yes. offer home visits for folks if that's something that is a barrier to care. Um, so there's, even if it's not in the physical building, I'm able to travel. Okay. That's a great thing to offer so that it covers everyone, especially you, yeah. if it got brought up. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's not part of the zoning, uh, of the zoning of Island, but it's just more or less so that you know and we all know what's what's required down the road to be aware. Yep. Well, does awesome. that, Thank you. It, does that you. prevent us from uh, voting on this and we're going to leave it up to the building inspect, inspector or is it not going to be permitted? Say that again now? Well, it's not handicap accessible and usually most <clears throat> businesses are, and it's either for the patient or for the staff that would be working there. And uh, if it's not handicap accessible, do we, we probably should not approve it. If it's not That's, handicap accessible, that is, to my knowledge, that is not a zoning bylaw issue. That is a building inspector that, issue. That's, that's kind of my question. And the building inspector is the one that will make that determination. Okay. Um, sounds like he's willing to let it, because he has plans to do something in the reasonable future, he may be amenable, but that is going to be his call. Is that and, and, and recall, I think we approved one of these on a similar business on Sunrise Drive, and we didn't bring up the issue of uh, handicap accessibility that might be yeah, we, 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 I mean, we want it we want we, we kind of want everybody to know what's going on but it's not yeah. really like I said, it's not really a zoning issue it's more or less to an alert if you would um of what will be required or is required within a reasonable period of time and since this person can apply actually um I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if that really satisfies the handicap issue, but since they can travel to the person, the handicap potentially handicap person's uh, residence, then that takes some of the might take some of the burden off of her. So, if the Stavros uh, Association uh, kind of objects to her doing the business, uh, the, would it be would it be shut down? Because we have no choice at that point, right? But it, I mean, she has an alternative that should work. It's, it's just that that one person is, you know, comes forward that it wasn't yes. you know, accessible. This is a business risk. No, I, I think it's more than a business risk, Michael. And well, uh, it, it, but it's, it's beyond the purview of the zone bylaws, all I'm saying. Okay, but I think. We have to make her available of all yeah. the information we possibly. No, I, can. I, I, well, yeah. I mean, within reason. We're not. We're not attorneys, and we don't need to be giving her every piece of legal advice on what she needs to do. Okay. All right. <laughs> we, Krista Dwyer will slap our hands for that. We do have a clause that I've added to the standard language that the applicant and/or owner is responsible for ADA compliance. All right. If required. If required. Yep. Good. So it's not Thanks. our response. It, you know, we're, uh, yes, we're flagging it for. Yeah. Okay. For the applicant. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, Mr. Dwyer? Sure. That's, so I'll make a motion to grant the application for a home business special permit. Uh, project is in harmony with general purposes and intent of the bylaw, not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood, will be conducted according to the submitted plans. Um, following conditions, uh, home occupation shall clearly be incidental and secondary to the residential purpose and it shall be conducted in such a way that does not give an outward appearance of a business, except for uh, uh, specifically allowed for signage and parking. Only one home business per residential property, and it shall be conducted by the principal practitioner who occupies the main building 
as a bona fide residence with no more than two other persons, whether full-time, part-time, or temporary, engaged in the occupation. Members of the immediate family residing in the building shall not be counted as employees for this purpose. No home business shall occupy more than 40% of the gross combined floor area uh, or more than 400 square feet total, whichever is less. Uh, one sign per lot may be displayed, either attached to the structure or uh, at street, not to exceed two square feet, um, not illuminated internally or externally, nor backlit. Incidental goods may only be offered for sale if the special uh, permit expressly permits it. So that raises a question, will you be selling related products to your to your patients? No. Okay. Will you have any signage beside the parking sign? No. No, no, really? Nope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the hours of client visits uh, shall be expressly stated and in no case shall the hours extend earlier than 8 a.m. or later than 9 p.m. What hours are you aiming for? Eight to six. Okay. Um, do you get regular deliveries of products or materials? No. Uh, you're not in an accessory structure. Uh, no uh, obnoxious, toxic, or hazardous odors. Um, no noise in excess of normal household noise. No storage of hazardous materials. All employee parking shall be on site. Uh, no on street parking. Hmm? Should we add no on street parking? It's client uh, on street parking is um, client uh, parking shall be a minimum of two vehicles per lot. The uh, way the bylaw reads on street parking is permitted provided said parking must be within the frontage property line of the home business residence. So yep. if you have an overflow that um, for any reason, as long as they park in front of you, that's okay. If they're in front of your neighbor, that's not okay. Um, but, but that was one of the complaints that I received over the phone. They said that people are gonna be swinging wide and uh, trying to get by, they're gonna drive on someone's adjacent lawn. So this, you think that's- that, that, that seems like an enforcement issue for the police department. If someone is- okay driving on a lawn. Uh, well, she has asked to actually, I have, you don't have, do you have any employees? No. No. She has adequate parking on her site for the car, for the vehicles. I think given what we've faced in the past that uh, we should really address that on street parking. If it's a business that should contain the parking on property site rather than using the- that's what the plan has is there is, I'm seeing one patient at a time, a maximum of five patients a day, and I have a designated space. Yeah, we can't change the zoning bylaw here. It's what it, it no. is what it is. And it allows right. her to park but, but, in, front of, right. in front of the house. But it's something to, something to be aware for the next, for the next to the future. We should look at it. Will you have any uh, additional lighting? Uh, no. Uh, all special permits for home businesses are non-transferable and are issued to the applicant for a specific home business. Um, no landscaping changes, no spillover of light. Uh, the approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Board of Health, the um, Hadley Water Commissioner, Sewer Commissioner, Select Board, they're all, they're all three. Um, uh, any project changes directed by other boards must be reviewed by the planning, uh, must be approved by the planning board. Um, the applicant and or owner is responsible for ADA compliance. The applicant and or owner is responsible for fire code compliance. Um, and that's it. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Make that motion. I made the motion. Do you made the motion? Second. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 401. So you're all set. Mr. Dwyer will get that written up. Uh, there is a 20 day appeal period once it gets filed with the town clerk. And on the 21st day, you go and see the building inspector and whoever other board you might, or you can just go and see other boards in the meantime, but on the 21st day, you, you theoretically could start your business. Great. Thank so you so much. 21, there's 21 days from filing with the town clerk, not from yeah. tonight. So yeah. it'll yeah. take me a while to get yeah. you know, a week or so to get this filed. Great. Okay. okay. Good luck. All right. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Next up. Next Green. is uh, just, uh, Colony Estates. I will not okay. be participating. Right. Colony Estates. The inclusionary idea. Payment in low. Payment in low. <laughs> After our last welcome, gentlemen. After Thank you. Last couple of times that we've discussed. Um, any other comments or ideas about the payment of thing? Like I said, last time we, last couple of times we talked about it, <clears throat> the planning board kind of has basically two choices. One is to charge a very realistic fee of what it would cost to create a unit which will be exorbitantly high. And the other one would be to charge a, that, that exorbitantly high fee would therefore probably very much discourage any payment for the payment in lieu. The other one is to charge a more modest fee and encourage payments for the payment in lieu. And Mr. Dwyer and I are kind of in favor of the more modest charge. I'm not sure where the other members sit on that idea. Well, I think big. that we set the minimal amount per unit per uh, house built, and that's $24,000. And that was we, paid. We, we haven't talked about any minimum, but yeah, we're, we're, you're, you're probably. Well, I don't know what you mean by modest. I have no idea what you mean by modest. Neither do I at this point in time yet. Okay. But common, okay, but it's not going to be. You know, there's going to probably be somewhere around twenty-four to thirty thousand dollars per unit. That's my opinion. Um, the high fee could very well be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not per unit. Per required, no. Per required, uh, you per required unit. In other words, if you build yeah, all right, okay. Well, if you build six, if you build six buildings, you got to put it in one unit. That would be uh, the fee for one unit. Whereas the twenty-four to thirty thousand dollars, instead of hundreds of thousands, would be one fee for the six units of twenty, somewhere in a thirty thousand plus range. So six times thirty. I'm not sure it'd be six times thirty. Well, over here where I live, it was twenty-four thousand dollars per unit. Six times twenty-four. I believe I believe that was for each unit required. I'm not sure. Was it six, Mr. Dwyer? You, you no, were, no, you it were wasn't more for each on unit that. Required. Come on. Were, were the that fees that were paid on the uh, East Street Commons was that twenty-four thousand dollar fee for each unit constructed? I mean each. Each of the 34 units paid that, or was that $30,000 for each uh, inclusionary unit? That was, uh, it was the, the 20, I, I, I'm not entirely sure if it differed based on the number of uh, bedrooms in a unit or not, but that was for every unit that Barry sold, he contributed a sum towards okay. his requirement, which was four, I think four affordable units. Okay. So it was 24,000 basically. But again, that was based, uh, it, it, as you recall, that as, 
as you were dealing with this, uh, and I was participating in that one, there was a lot of back and forth because we, we were sort of doing it on the fly. Um, so, um, you know, that's, that, that's what we worked Peter, out. Peter Jelinas just when said it was, the fee was $350,000 in the 35 units. But I think that is that in our notes any place or in our minutes? Yeah, I see that came up in the chat. Yeah. Well, no, that is told that he's paid the data or is there coming some more? Uh, that is the total that we expect to receive. We oh, 350. I th think we received something like 200,000 okay. a okay. couple That's of years okay. ago. And then there haven't been any sales since then. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've got to figure out exactly what our history shows us before we can talk about what's modest or not modest or burdensome. Mr. 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 Seawald. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, so let me just um, step step this back for a second. Your bylaw is quite clear. For a payment in lieu, you're supposed to have regulations pursuant to which you are charging these fees. Okay? You don't have those regulations. You don't have a pro you don't have a bylaw that has produced any affordable units to speak of. Uh, and other than Barry Roberts, there hasn't been any payments. And so I I'm I'm here to suggest that there's a fundamental flaw in your bylaw. And you know you can tell that the bylaw is flawed because you're having so much trouble administering it and applying it. May I suggest that the proper way to do um, uh, affordable housing zoning is not with a stick, but with a carrot. And so um, what other communities do and what the modern way to do this is to offer additional units, some of which would be affordable um, by reducing area, reducing frontage. So it's um, incentive zoning, but you don't have that. We're, I don't and, think we're here to discuss uh, what we should or well, should not can, do can I, can I just, Can I just let him speak? Can, can I just finish my what, what I have to say? I won't take yeah. long. And um, so, you know, I can see you here pulling numbers out of the air, just pulling numbers out of the air. And the truth is, uh, I've heard this board over the last 40 years, three of whom I am, whose faces I am looking at were on this board 35 years ago, when I've heard you say there are no precedents set. Okay. Over and over again, you guys say there's no precedent set. So now you want to go back to Barry Roberts uh, development and use it as a precedent. The truth is, your, your, uh, your stick zoning doesn't work and you don't have any regulations for payments in lieu, which you've had on the books now for many, many years. So let me just suggest that, I, and I've been in this business as, as the three of you know, I've been in this business for almost 40 years and I've been a municipal lawyer for almost 40 years. I've taught municipal law and land use planning both at Winnick Law and at UMass. I know about uh, planning law, and I know about the constitutional requirements of planning law, and it is patently unconstitutional to require Mr. Jolinas to give away some of his land in order to get a subdivision approved. It's patently unconstitutional. It's a taking. And that's why we have moved from the stick form to the carrot form. The the uh, why excuse uh, me? Why didn't Hadley's council? Can I finish, please? Why didn't Hadley's council tell us that it was Mr. unconstitutional? Well, he's why making us. We're not asking. So what I would like to do, I think you're out of line. And, and so I'm not out of line. I have a right to represent my client, and he's entitled to due process. Don't tell us what. Are you, don't tell us what's constitutional and not constitutional. Let, let Mr. Seawall, are you a constitutional Mr. lawyer? Because I am. Neither are you. Neither are you. I am. Ms. 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 Let I've him taught constitutional speaking. law at UMass. Big let, deal. Mike, Mike, let him finish speaking. So the, the bottom line is that there is an inflection point at which it no longer makes sense for Peter to be paying into your trust fund, and it makes sense for him to challenge your bylaw. And I'm trying to avoid that. So I'd like to get Peter to a number that everyone can live with. 
And hundreds of thousands of dollars is not going to do it. It's simply not going to do it. We're nowhere close to where we will get to a place where neither party is happy. I have money to offer you. I can offer you $40,000 immediately. And, and this will be done. But the truth is, you have a problem with your bylaw because you can't create affordable units and you can't get, you don't have regulations uh, for your trust fund because you can't figure out what the standards are. And so I'm willing, to, you know, and Peter is willing to write you a check for $40,000 for a release. And I think that's more than fair, given that you don't have any standards to apply. And, you know, this, this idea that you're just going to pick hundreds of thousands of dollars, where does that number come from? Okay. This is just, just like Can we comment now, first of all? Uh, yes. Okay. Number one comment. We had uh, close to 12% affordable housing units. That's the highest in Happy Valley. It's higher than, it was higher than Amherst, higher than Northampton. So don't tell us how to zone our town because I think we've done a, a commendable job for affordable housing. Where do you live? I mean, what town do you live? I live in Northampton and we're also okay, over so 10%. We, still, we have a greater percentage than Northampton and Amherst. And, and how about all our surrounding communities that, so nevertheless, we do fulfill our commitment. And what we're trying to do with this inclusionary zoning is trying to uh, make sure that we do maintain the over 10%. So what we probably should have done is that require the developer to put a unit for on that property because uh, with inflation now, whatever you contribute, it's not gonna be anywhere near satisfying a single unit of affordable housing. So uh, that, that's kind of my editorial comment. Oh, I, I kind of agree. And excuse me for losing my temper there, Mr. Seawald. I had a good constitutional law teacher at Amherst College named Earl Latham. I don't know if you know the name or not. That was many moons ago. But I don't see how we can accept $40,000. And so the other options are to build an affordable unit or to give us an affordable unit. But your bylaw doesn't require it to provide an affordable unit because it applies to subdivisions. Mr. You know, Peter doesn't build units. He builds Peter them. subdivides. He doesn't build units. He's not a builder. And so to tell Peter that he has to build a unit, how's he going to do that? So and read, then, read, read the bylaw. Then, read I the did bylaw. read the bylaw, and that's what concerns no, me. It says and, you, and then your bylaw requires that in perpetuity, he be re responsible for monitoring the affordability of this. I mean, when does that end? The, the, it's, the bylaw, you're right. It's a it's a it's a monstrosity. <laughs> it's a monstrosity, Michael. It's a monstrosity. Yeah, it, it is. Does it does not it's, work. It's what we've got, and we can't change but, it while we're sitting here. We've got what but, we but have, he, and we have to live with it. And quite frankly, if we allow uh, Mr. Jolinas to give us forty thousand dollars, then I think we got to go back to the Roberts deal and send a lot of that money back. When when Mr. Jolinas applied for the subdivision. I believe the payment in lieu fee had been removed from the inclusionary bylaw at the time. So his only choice was to provide a affordable unit somewhere, either on site or off site. The affordable payment lieu was reinstated only recently when we reinstituted the, uh, what you call it, the fund. I believe Affordable I'm, housing trust fund. I, I believe right. I'm correct. I believe I'm correct on that. I, you are. There was a, a prior. There was a the, prior provision for payment in lieu. It was removed right. and replaced. Right. For the reason you see, for, for some of the reasons you say that it didn't seem fair for the developer to be required to, in perpetuity, be supplying and be responsible for one or two affordable units. So the payment in lieu was put back in place. Yes, we are struggling with trying to get an equitable payment. There's no doubt about that because there are towns in the Eastern part of the state that, re that have various uh, payment formulas. 
Some of them are upwards of several hundred thousand dollars per affordable unit. And I agree with you, that is a bit high. Leave it at that statement. However, we're trying to make it a more equitable statement and bringing it down to a more le a, another level where we are encouraging the payments um, to be not so extraordinary. And yeah, we are struggling with that. There's no question about it because we have disagreements on what it should be. And the best scenario we have is to compare it right now to what, as a basis, what Mr. Roberts has paid for the East Street Commons. And he paid on a, basically a, a uh, he's calling each dwelling that was sold a unit. That's fair. Okay, that's what he calls the unit because the state doesn't have to, state doesn't uh, define a unit either. It can be one studio apartment. It can be three or four bedrooms. As far as as far as we've read the the state in, information, you, if you disagree, let me know that a unit is one unit, however many bedrooms it may have. That is not defined. True. Okay, so we're not. Th that's also where you were struggling. One unit can be a house that can be a little studio apartment. And so in this case, Mr. Julianus and others have put up houses. Well, we're, we're trying to squeeze too much into the bag here um, because we're not having apples and apples comparison all the way across the board. So, you know, we're not trying to in any way, shape or form punish anybody. We're trying to come up with a formula or not a formula. Yeah, I guess it'd be a formula that is reasonable on both the, plant, the town's part and the developer's part. And that's where we stand. We're not, we're not uh, trying to be right, but, we did, but, but you sure. haven't done that. And so you have no basis for, for charging because you haven't done that. You don't have the regulations that the bylaw requires in order to establish an, an amount. That's and what we're trying to, we are I, trying I to understand establish. that, but but so where do you get the number that you want to apply to, to Mr. Gelinas? And so let let me just go also back to to you know the non-precedent, which is Barry Roberts. So he's got 335 units and he's paying 350,000. That's 10,000 a unit. So where does so where do so my clients got seven units or eight units? Where does where does hundreds of thousands of dollars come from? Barry Roberts is paying ten thousand a unit. Barry Roberts went to the zoning board of appeals for a variance on the payment formula because when he put the when he put the bylaw in, it said one thing. We changed it because we, the, the, the town wouldn't approve the affordable fund. The finance committee, so we had a bylaw that said you could make a payment, but they wouldn't allow us to create a fund. And so Barry Rowick was approved kind of under that bylaw. Shortly afterwards, we took the wording out of there. So when he applied for his uh, unit, when he applied for the senior housing, he went, but he was under the grandfathered clause, grandfathered part of the bylaw where it says you could make a payment in lieu, but that didn't even exist because we didn't even have an affordable housing trust fund. And it took us, I want to say 10 years to get the wording for an affordable trust fund. We finally got so the trust fund, we put the wording back into the bylaw, and we probably shouldn't have, and we should have left it the way it was and forced any developer to put in and to build an affordable unit or convert an affordable unit. Unconstitutional, Mr. Jim. It's just unconstitutional well, to- The, the town, to... town council approved it. So that's, that's your opinion. I'm not gonna disagree with you, but the town council and attorney general approved all that stuff. So yeah, we made a mistake. We shouldn't have put the affordable so, fee in there until we had a formula. So, so now that we are where we are, how do we get right. ourselves out of this? That's what okay. I really- can I just go back and, for a second? And, and we're trying I, to, go ahead. I'm trying to be very careful to not actively participate in this, but I did want to pull up the actual decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals. 
which was basically uh, to allow Barry to make a payment in lieu when the bylaw didn't allow it at the time. That's all the ZBA really did at that time. Right. It didn't. It didn't set a fee. It didn't. It didn't set a. Uh, it didn't set a formula. It just set a. Um, um, it just said that it was a hardship that the Happy Housing Authority, which was mentioned in the bylaw, was not prepared to administer the affordable units. So um, he was allowed to uh, proceed without uh, complying with the affordability on the basis of his promise to make a payment. And then we took in actual amendment was um, it's it's really it's short. This is just what what we decided. We amended site plan approval. Um, on the basis of his variance to allow him to make a payment in lieu, we uh, revised site plan approval to allow him to contribute $350,000 incrementally from the sale of each building to be contributed to the Happy Affordable Housing Trust Fund upon its creation. Where did the twenty-four thousand dollar number come from? Is just an er error? I don't know. That was the number you gave us. I don't know where it came from. Uh, I got it from a closing I did. Okay. In um, on East Street Commons, and that was the amount that was held out. And uh, again, I, I'm not sure. Well, clearly that number was not what Barry did. Did so. Listen. We've got to make a decision and put this thing, get it off the stove. And so the Roberts development paid $10,000 a unit four years ago. Uh, we're talking about six units here. Let's, let's assume 10% inflation, which is probably not the case. So let's say $11,000 times, times six, $66,000 in, I'd vote for that. Can I have just a minute to talk to my client? I mean, sure. let's, is, I don't know is about there you guys, but uh, well, we clearly okay. we, this four twenty four thousand dollars was a bad number. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would I would take to eleven thousand dollars per unit, but you know the board has to decide that. I can't decide that. Okay. You you talk to your client, the board, and then the, we'll just. What What do you feel about the eleven thousand for this particular one, Joe? Unit. Per unit, per, per unit, yeah. So a total of sixty, a total of whole yeah. mini mini. We've we've got to make some kind of compromise, and obviously we do need some regulations. And uh, this is not working. So uh, I think. Oh, we, I, sure, it's not working. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, yeah. Mr. Seawald, I agree, it's not working. But our town council approved it, and the twenty four thousand dollars. I apologize, was a bad number. That I don't know where that came from. But yeah. uh, if it's ten thousand per unit, we kick it up to eleven, and we, you know, we, I think we spent enough time on it. Yeah. For for this particular item, it may be worthwhile. Correct. You want to participate in eleven thousand dollar bill? You want to exempt yourself on it? I I will. I'm not going to participate in in this one. I I'd like the concept. I'd like to participate in the, the concept of. A payment in lieu formula, but I can't participate in this one. That's fine. Okay, I just want to make want to be clear. That's fine. So my my, my client will agree to a flat fee payment of sixty six thousand dollars. We'll agree to that. Okay. How many units okay. does he have altogether? He only has six units, right, or seven? Well, he's got seven units, and uh, so far, and um, but. He's not going to go any higher. I'm going to tell you right now. This is above what he authorized me. I came in there with fifty thousand dollars in my pocket. That was I thought it. you said forty. 
Uh, well, of course, well, Michael, you got to leave some room to negotiate. You think I'm going to give, gonna gonna give you my, my bottom line number? <laughs> well, then my, my eleven thousand dollars per unit was, was well, then, not but, correct either. We haven't but, voted on. And you but, said sixty-six, but, and I accepted it. And no, so, no, 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 we're trying well, to how many more units is he going to put in attorney I, none Walt. he's done he's I, done I, I, okay I, I said in the beginning we we shouldn't have done what we've done we've done it we're going to live with it we're going to correct it and let's make something out of this where we don't want to we don't want to we're not trying to bankrupt the poor guy that's putting no of course not I'll, I'll make a motion okay. then that we accept sixty six thousand dollars as a payment in lieu of building an affordable unit or giving us an affordable unit. And that's all that Mr. Jolinas will own on, on colony estates. I right. second that. <laughs> Mr. Who Cigar seconded it? But we need what? a board what? member second. to second that. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't vote. <laughs> So repeat, Mr. Zagrana, repeat the amount again. One one fee, one check. Sixty-six thousand. Fifty-six thousand. You second I'll, that? I'll, I'll second it. You second, Mr. Michael, Mr. Sarzinski's motion. Good. Any other discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we better do a roll call here. Michael. Abstain. Mr. What's Aye. that? Mr. Zagradnik? Aye. Mr. Maximoski, aye. Mr. Dwyer? Abstain. Abstain. Motion passes 3-0 with two, one absent and one non-participating. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Do you know what the Shreveport cases were? Just, <laughs> it's not the true. Shreveport cases? Yeah. Which ones are those? Maybe I know them by a different that's name. Where the, that's when the uh, U.S. Congress decided that the United States had the right to regulate interstate commerce because this is kind of similar to this going from Louisiana to Texas, they charge one fee and going the other way, they charge a different fee. Right. Do, do you know about the Nolan Dolan cases? No. The Nolan Dolan cases basically say that when you are exacting a fee for a, a discretionary permit, um, you have to show both a direct nexus and substantial proportionality between this development and the harm that you say was created. And so you would have to show if we went to court that Mr. Jolinas caused a problem that he has to fix. It's not, well, so the, the issue here is that this is a town-wide problem of affordable housing and the town is. needs to solve it. And that's what happens when you do incentive zoning. As I said, you got eight lots. If you said, okay, Mr. Jolinas, you're getting 12 lots in the same area that we put those eight lots, you get two, we get two for affordable housing. That is constitutional because it's, it's, it, it gives a benefit to the <coughs> developer. You, you, well, now that the eminent barrister is on his soapbox, I would like to say that the town of Hadley has a, uh, a obligation to feed the people as opposed to house the people. We have some of the best agricultural land in the valley, and this is our primary responsibility to feed the people, not to build houses all over it. So yeah. is one of the reasons we have the zoning that we do. Plus, we do not have sewer all over town where you cannot have cluster zoning or apartments. So we do have some limitations and we do have some legitimate reasons for the zoning that we have. And that's why 25% of the land is used for raising tobacco. <laughs> it is. Well, the truth is that the state has imposed on you the obligation of housing because you have to have 10% affordable housing. And that's what we you're trying to avoid. Already. I, know you, I, I know you did, but the problem is other housing is being built. And so the number is going down if you don't keep imposing affordable housing. That's I, I'm just- uh, Attorney Seawall, do you know what Northampton's uh, housing number is, affordable housing? It's over 10%. It is? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. 
and we do it by incentive. And we also, you know, we have the benefit, and I and I recognize we have the benefit of having, you know, HAP come in and build a, a four-story building in downtown, and we get a lot of affordable housing. Those are all affordable housing units. So we have that advantage that you don't have that we have, you know, we had two um, affordable housing unit uh, apartment buildings built on Pleasant Street. But, you know, and so we put in CPA money and we put in some seed money, some feasibility studies, and that's what this money should go to, you know, feasibility studies and, you know, seed money to get things started. Um, but uh, I appreciate uh, the back and forth. Uh, nice to meet you, Michael. And I'm sure we'll have a, an opportunity to speak again. Well, and yeah, I, I, and I, also, I, my, I also have to give a lot of, no, wait a second, before I go, I have to give kudos to you three who have been doing that. You guys have been on this board close to 40 years. It's got to be close to 40 years. No, oh, I, am I wrong? Well, I'm 40 years. Joe is about 47. Mr. Dwyer is like 36. I know. I mean, as long as I've years. been practicing, you've been doing this. And I want to <laughs> thank you for doing that because some, you know, it's, it's a valuable service you're performing and I appreciate it. Okay. All right, thank gentlemen, thank, thank you, you so much. Good night. Good night. Okie dokie. All right. Um, next up, endorsement of housing production plan that we I sent out for that uh, PBPC study that was done. Mm -hmm. Comments on that. The, plan, the select board approved that the beginning of February. Planning board needs to approve it for it to go on and be uh, to the Department of Health, D, D, o, H, H, o, D, or whatever, D, O, H, C, D, or whatever they're called. Any comments on the housing plan, production plan? I don't have any uh, specific ones. Uh, it was I, discussed at the uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee meeting last week, and one of the uh, members of that committee had some technical questions about a couple of the charts and whether they were saying what they thought, what they said they were saying. Um, I did give him Ken Comius uh, email and I think I gave, I may not have given him your email, Jim, um, okay. so he could raise that directly. Um, and I do appreciate, I had to leave early at the last meeting. Um, uh, and Mark's not here now, so I don't know if there is, uh, uh, we want to put it off or is it important to vote on well, it? I mean, I'd like to have Mark here as part of the, as part of the process, but what I'd also like to, even if we don't approve it tonight, I would like to get at least everybody that's here, their opinion as to, you know, does it look good? Will you approve it? Do you have other questions? So if we ever approve it, if we approve it at our next meeting, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I just don't want to get to our next meeting and say, oh, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? I'd like to get everything out of the four of us tonight if you have any concerns or don't like it so that we have a chance to get it approved at our next meeting. Mike I did, or Bill, any I, other I had no, good job. I had uh, nothing to add. Okay. I mean, the, 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 the report is like 42 pages long and somewhere around 35 or 36 pages are facts. And the result of the survey, there's only a few pages in the back that have recommendations. Some of the recommendations have already been completed by the planning board and the other ones uh, are very similar to the master plan. The planning board shall consider this, shall consider that. So things that we should look at, but nothing that says Hadley must do this or Hadley must do that. So does it look like something that we, that you would approve at the next meeting? I'll, I'll go over to get it. It's looked pretty good. You're right. A lot of facts. So yeah, I'll go along with it. And, and the, the, some of the facts, like I said, have they, they when I, I presented them to the selectmen probably in uh, January and it, it shocked a lot of people, including me, that the ad, the median income in the town of Hadley is just under eighty seven thousand dollars a year. That's thirteen thousand dollars higher than than the Hampshire County, and it's higher than the state. So, it it answers a lot of questions as to why, when Hadley applies for grants, 
We don't get them. They consider to have the wealthy community. One of oh, the you got a lot of wealthy farmers here. <laughs> one of the wealthiest in Western America. I mean, those are facts. Like I said, there's a lot of facts in there that, that you know, in Joe's comment, one third of Hadley is aquifer. Um, and because of that, that has a lot to do with sewer and septic. When you have the aquifer, you need a minimum under Title V, so many acres or so many square feet of, uh, of so many square feet of property for basically, I think it's each bedroom, right, Tom? So, you know, you, you, you have these zoning as 40,000 square feet. And it's a maximum of four bedrooms. Somebody wants to put in a five bedroom house, normally it's not permitted. And they want us to reduce our size for cluster. How do you put in when you're on septic and have these only got septic in, in select areas and the other, most, most of the uh, aquifer, I mean, a lot of the aquifer is over septic areas where there's no sewer. So how do you put, how you would even get close to putting cluster in when you don't have sewer and you need 10,000 square feet of uh, land for each bedroom? It, it, it's, it, the numbers just aren't going to work. And, you know, you, you know evidently Title, not, title five and uh, the affordable part of the housing, EOCD or whatever they're called, don't talk to much, either, each other very much. But, you know, it's environmental stuff too. Anyways, okay, thank you. So at the next meeting, they'll put it on so we can uh, formally adopt it, endorse it rather, accept it. Um, I put out some possible zoning articles for the town meeting. Um, I'll briefly go over them because you probably didn't have a chance to really review them much. Um, one is, I know at the last meeting we talked about the uh, entertainment uh, bylaw, a venue bylaw, and Joe asked a question about getting police and fire endorsement on that. Fire will absolutely stand behind us on those because I said at the beginning of the meeting, one of the reasons for those two bylaws, particularly the, uh, the uh, food and beverage one, is that there have been explosions of food trucks in other states where people have been killed and for improper use, storage, and whatever else it may be, piping of propane tanks. <clears throat> and there have been some various serious incidents. And the fire department does not want that to happen in Hadley. So he says, yes, he will, he'll, he'll actually give facts and figures if we need it at a town meeting. I guess that kind of applies somewhat to the venue bylaw because they do have some similar things. They want to have it, they want to, they want a, a clearing house or a, clear, a clearing board that would have some authority to make sure things are proper. And by going to the planning board on a zone bylaw, the, at least the applicant would know that they need to comply with NFPA, whatever it might be, police would have a chance to put their two cents in. It's not so much that they wanna really regulate it. It's the mad, uh, by a zone bylaw, I think it, it is more of having a formal review required where everybody knows what's required for them to get their permits. And that includes even the building permit because it comes back and you know suddenly somebody's got food trucks on a site and I didn't know that. And they, they go there and they find some problems. So enough said. The, no, uh, the one I have question on is the, the, the trailer one. It uh, seems to dovetail into the trailers along the floodplain. That, that, is, that is exactly right. What's happened is the 15 foot side yard setback is fine. But on some of the parcels, a 50 foot front yard setback seems, it's been, it, it, Mr. Quinlan has been getting some real uh, pressure as to why is the 50 feet, these are not permanent structures. They're only there for five or six months of the year. Why can't we be closer than 50, than 50 feet to the front yard, which is a dirt road? And 
it would make his job a lot easier on doing the permits if we could go to cut it down to 15 feet. But uh, so, so still going to be one trailer per lot, right? And uh, two trailers. No, no, it, we we, we no longer limit to one trailer per lot. We limit it to how many, the number of trailers that'll fit according to NFPA and the fire chief and the building inspector. Okay, but the if once you get into three trailers, now you're a trailer camp, and that's, that's exactly a of bylaws. So that's not changing. So it's maximum of two per lot then, and a third one has to go in for the trailer park where you need a sewer system, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. You can comply with the camper campsite. Or the health regulations with uh, porta potties, but they have to be not for the three. It said for the campsite regulations, it's it's different. It, it also gets interesting because the campsite regulations apply to situations where people are paying to be there. So yeah. if you have five family members with five RVs, that's different than renting space to four other people. It gets into some very complicated rentals versus free versus family-owned campsites, but you do need porta potties. One of the problems that the Board of Health and the building inspector is running into is that porta potties need to be registered. People are bringing in porta potties that aren't registered, that don't comply, and they're they're not good. Leave it at that. So by doing some of this stuff, it's, it's going to be they're they're. They want the people to put in a basically approved porta potty. Is that correct, Tom? Yes. Yeah. In the application, they have to put down the company and all, and, and it all has to, you know, Board of Health checks to make sure that's correct before they sign off on it. Yeah. We've got a very good, the Board of Health right now has a very good, highly competent porta uh, inspector. He only works part time and from what I have seen and heard at meetings and heard of this person, he is on the ball like nobody we've had in, I don't know, when. Um, he he's is really good. He is being uh, increased to full time in the next fiscal year. And, uh, that, and that was a big problem because uh, even when Dick Tessier was out there doing inspections, he was doing inspections of some of the restaurants. And uh, um, was it Greg Mish was doing Title V? Um, no one was doing porta potties. No one was doing food trucks. And then uh, Dick lost re-election two years ago, or maybe three now. Uh, there were no Board of Health inspections that I'm aware. Of. I guess they had a contract inspector, but. Uh, no uh no real inspection program for the last number x number of years and uh that is that is changing yeah this this gentleman is i'll just say this gentleman is very sharp and he's his he, name he's on the ball and <laughs> he's cost he's 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 politely ruffled some flip some feathers to put it mildly uh ben ben uh, lippin is it lippin Lip, Lipton? L Lipman. Lipton? Lipman. Lipman, I think, isn't it? So, okay. Uh, another one of the possible potential bylaws is, uh, where am I? Um, the men section, oh, 3.1. And this was actually brought up by the building inspector. We have a bylaw, and this is something, Mr. Zagradic, four people living in a- Yeah, that's all oh yeah, I forgot to bring, bring that up. That was somehow eliminated when no. we went to the recodification bylaw. No. We, it was, how was no. it eliminated? There, the, four, the four related persons, is in the codification bylaw. I thought the word unrelated got dropped. 
I went all the way, you know that little tiny booklet that Bill Dwyer gave us that's got the original zone bylaw to like 12 pages? Yes. That original bylaw does not say unrelated. It says four persons. Oh, well, the next one, the next one did say unrelated. Okay. I looked back, I couldn't find unrelated in the bylaws. Okay, I'll have to pull out my my archive somewhere. Okay. But it, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we're going to put it in. We're going to put it in. Yes. That's where that, that's why that's there because it, it's no. Yeah. Um, the other one is, let's see, what is it? 13.1. 13.1 is, is the clearance, general bylaw, the venue, um, ag related uh, bylaw for food trucks. So the bylaw for the food trucks, that there is a, I'm taking that. I think it's so far. I've been copying the town, the city of Summer, Summer, Somerville, and modifying that because they got into a whole bunch of baloney, and I'm not sure that's going to be. Really, hope that'll be ready for this annual meeting. I'm hoping it will be, but it re, I'm relating it to food and beverage truck dispensing trucks to try to uh, basically get the, That'll be under a bylaw, a general bylaw, not a zone bylaw. Oh, Jim, on how they will be and where they'll be permitted and inspected. Jim, I don't know if you picked this up in the meetings, but Somerville is where Ben had worked. Oh. And he is, he was saying today that uh, some of the things we're talking about are new to him, but food trucks, he's really on top of. So yeah. you might reach out to him for some uh Okay. I didn't help realize there. he was from Somerville. I thought he was, okay, great. I will, I will definitely get his opinion on this, that one when I get, when it's a little bit closer. What else we should include? Tom. He's coming to our uh, bylaw meeting next time. Oh, he he's is. coming at uh, 1030. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he's coming and so yep. is uh, so somebody else. There's two people coming to that one. Uh, from the police department at 930. We have right. coming. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. And what are we going to do about the inclusionary zoning bylaw? I mean, we can't let this thing keep drifting along here. It's It almost gave me a heart attack tonight, for Christ's sakes. Well, you... What? Why don't you come Let's, up? We got to do something about it. We can't just you come up with it. a suggestion for the next meeting, and I'll come I think up. We with... should, I think we should just repeal it. But you would okay. I have. I'll get the Sunderland bylaw and forward it to your your people. And it, in spite of what the eminent barrister with the constitutional background said, uh, the Sunderland bylaw is for older people, and it is up to the responsibility of the developer to take care of all the paperwork, the interviewing of the applications, applicants, and uh, submittal to all the necessary information to the state. So that was, can... it, was our Was our bylaw approved by the Attorney General's office? Yes. 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 Correct me, is the Attorney General now the governor of the state? Same one or different one? Oh, this it would have been a different one. That was probably Martha Coakley Martha or even Coakley, her predecessor. But it was approved by the state. So, did they would they allow something unconstitutional to go by? Yes. Or did they... We got to figure out what's going to work, Mike. And so I, yeah, I exactly. think, let's think I mean, this, oh, this this well, can't get, go get on. Us like a, crazy. Joe, get us get us the email copy of the Sunland bylaws so we can look at it. I will. Um. I'll forward if you get a paper copy, give it to me. I'll scan and give it to everybody. We'll get it electronically. I think I've got it on an email, Jim. I'll, I'll figure I, out. I think it's it. available online. Oh, it is? Okay. So, yeah, we we, we need to straighten this one out. We don't have anything else pending, but it's going to come up again. We know it. So the another way around it is to do what uh, I think in Amherst, uh, it only kicks in in 12 or more units. So we have a really low threshold. And even with that really low threshold, this one project was the only one that got snagged by it in the well, eight or nine well, years that it's been on the books. Yeah, I'd like even, to have even if we go to 12 units, to count. You, even if we go to 12 units, the issue is still going to be there. Yeah, you, granted, yes. It's just, a, just a, it's just a bigger number. So whether it's a small small subdivision or a big one, what we want to address is what is the right way to do this so that irregardless of subdivision size or development size, whatever you want to call it, we address it. 
in a reasonable manner. Well, I am. I'm glad. Thank you, Bill, for clarifying how much was put in here at the B Street Commons. Ten thousand per unit, not twenty-four. That's a huge difference. Yeah, it's a huge. Yeah, difference. I'm. I'm wondering if some of it might have been a catch-up, or. Uh, yeah, I, well, I just wanted to put it, bury it. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, invoices. Yes, wait a minute. I think I got an invoice to pay. Uh, no, let's wait until the next time. Because the only in invoice I'm going to have, we, we approve the... Uh, the two hearings we just had, the only other one coming up is going to be the the uh, legal notice for the two marijuana establishments review that's not going to be until the middle of march so let's address that either at that meeting or the next meeting so we'll leave that one alone for now so um i have nothing else mr dwyer i don't have anything else mr quinlan no anybody else no. Motion to adjourn. So move. All right. Motion. I move we adjourn. Okay. You're going to pick me up, Zeke? Yes. Motion. Okay. We want somebody second it. 750 second. Good motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Alex.